All right, so in this video, we'll talk about why the Nissan CVT transmission fails and what you can do about it. So we'll go over the symptoms and we'll separate them in three categories. So we'll mark them green, yellow, and red. Green meaning that the problem is just starting, yellow meaning that you can still do something about it, and red means that the transmission is done. All right, so let's get into it. But wait, 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 before we get into it, if you like this video, if this video helps you, consider subscribing to my channel. I upload videos like this one every week. And if you are a mobile mechanic, I upload videos for mobile mechanics on how to build a successful mobile mechanic business. So if you like this video, give it a I like this video. If you don't like this video, give it an I don't like this video because this helps me with the YouTube algorithm and it makes me happy. Okay, let's start. So the first symptoms are the CVT fluid overheats or the transmission overheats and the car goes into limp mode or, or fail safe mode, which I'll talk more about this later on in this, in this video because this is the main problem of this C of these CVT transmissions. The, the next symptoms are transmission slipping and the downshift problems. Also a noise heard at con while constant acceleration or at constant highway speed. Now with these symptoms, that means that there is a problem and it needs to be fixed as soon as possible. The noise at, at constant acceleration or ex at constant highway speed, usually it's the CVT fluid pump or the, the oil pump in the transmission. What happens is that, as you can see in this picture, the bearings go bad on the pump. So the bearings, as they uh, as they turn around, as they turn, they make a noise. They're like a whining, like a little... Uh, humming noise it's a humming noise it's not a whining noise it's a humming noise like a mm, it's like accelerating the call it gets louder so that's a bearing noise this means that the transmission would have to be removed from the car open the transmission replace the parts in, that are bad in the transmission like the uh, the cvt fluid pump or the oil pump bearings and then put it back together put it in the car and so this is labor intense so it is going to be an expensive fix because it's labor intense. The next symptoms mean that the transmission is basically done and there, is, and there isn't anything that can be done to it as you can see in this picture here. And these symptoms are loss of power and it's not it's fail safe mode, meaning that the, it's not just an overheat. It means that the transmission, it's broken. It, you, can't, you can't accelerate it anymore. It's not fixable. The other symptoms are jerking, shuddering and shaking and a, like a burning smell also a whining noise coming from the transmission. So it's a whining noise that, that's coming out the back of the engine. It's not in front of the engine, it's in the back of the, en of the, of the engine where the transmission is and it basically sounds like a power and seeing pump and it's like a not loud whining noise when the car is at idle. So this basically means that this the transmission is not fixable it's got severe damage inside of the transmission so if you take out the transmission fluid dipstick and it's and it smells like burnt oil this is due to a lot of metal to metal friction and it's the it's burnt inside of the transmission so basically the transmission is done so let's talk more about the overheating symptom and what you can do about this to prevent the, the transmission of going bad too soon it's still going to go out because it is an engineering flaw so when the transmission overheats the check engine light might co might come on and the car will go into fail safe mode or limp mode this means that the power of the engine will be reduced to protect the transmission of damage this is because the transmission control module detects that the transmission fluid temperature is above normal and you can still drive the car, you can still drive the car, like for example you're driving on the freeway and it, the power of the engine reduces, you can still drive the car to get it to, to park it and to get it to a safe place or a safe parking lot. The transmission fluid overheating is the main problem and the root cause of the mechanical problems in the transmission. 
Now this makes sense because when the transmission fluid is cold, the viscosity of the transmission fluid is going to be thicker. And when the transmission fluid is hot, the viscosity of the transmission fluid is going to be thicker. And so the hotter the transmission fluid gets, the less it's going to lubricate the transmission because the viscosity is thinner and thinner and thinner. So there is going to be more metal to metal friction in the, in the transmission, so the transmission goes bad, transmission fails. So why does the transmission fluid overheat and why does the car go into limp mode? Well, these two things are connected, but there, here are three reasons why this happens. Number one, overfilled CVT fluid level. If you had your transmission uh, fluid changed or you had a CV axle shaft replaced and some of the transmission fluid came out and so the transmission was filled with trans, uh, transmission fluid or CVT fluid, but it was overfilled this would make the car would go into limp mode according to Nissan if the transmission fluid is above normal level then it's going to go into limp mode number two incorrect type of transmission fluid you can buy aftermarket transmission fluid out there there are several brands that sell CVT transmission fluid but it might not be compatible with your with your car or with the CVT transmission in your car and so I'd recommend that you get the transmission fluid from the factory because it's going to be the right transmission fluid. So Nissan has two types of transmission fluid. They have the CVT NS2 fluid and they have the CVT NS3 fluid. So make sure that you get the right type of CVT fluid after a, a transmission fluid change or a CV axle shaft replacement. Because the incorrect transmission fluid will, would make the car to go into limp mode and this would damage the transmission. All right, so let's talk about number three, which is incorrect coolant or water mix. If there is a leak or you replace the part in the cooling system and you topped off the radiator with the incorrect antifreeze or not the right amount of antifreeze, then this would make the transmission to overheat because it's the, it's the same cooling system that cools down the transmission. And so this would, if when the transmission overheats, then the car goes into limp mode. So here is what you can do about these problems. Get your car checked for any leaks coming from the transmission and fix the leaks if there is any, any leaks coming from the transmission. Get the transmission fluid changed every 25 to 30,000 miles. This is recommended by Nissan. This helps because when the transmission gets older, it doesn't lubricate the same as when it's, it's new transmission fluid. So it helps to replace the transmission fluid every 25 to, to 30,000 miles. Use the right type of transmission fluid for your car and fill up the transmission fluid to the right level. For the correct coolant and water mix, always get the Nissan 50-50 antifreeze, not the universal or the full strength antifreeze. Because if you get the full strength antifreeze, then you would have to dilute that to get it to 50-50, 50% coolant and 50% water. And you might not get it to the right percentage. so just go with the 50-50 antifreeze just to make sure. Get the antifreeze changed every 60,000 miles that's recommended by Nissan but the CVT transmission starts to have problems at 40,000 miles between 40,000 miles to 140,000 miles so I'd recommend you get the antifreeze changed every 40,000 miles just to make sure because the additives in the coolant lose their effectiveness in time to cool down the engine and the transmission now this is specifically for these Nissan models that have a CVT transmission. For other cars you can change the antifreeze between 60,000 miles to 120,000 miles. If you want to know which Nissan models have a CVT transmission then check out this video that I made about the list of the Nissan, Nissan models that have a CVT transmission in them. Some people are installing an upgraded aftermarket cooler and condenser on their car to help cool down the transmission fluid. Now the CVT transmission already comes with a cooler, but it's not enough to cool down the transmission. So some people are upgrading the cooler to a better one and adding a condenser on the front of the, of the car, like a small radiator to cool down the transmission. So that's another option that you might want to look into. If you install these aftermarket parts in your car, then make sure the, to top off the antifreeze with the right type of antifreeze in the radiator and in the reservoir. Also check the fluid, the CVT transmission fluid level and top it off if needed 
with the right CVT transmission fluid. Also, you would have to consider if installing these parts in your car would void the warranty on your car. Now, I wanted to know about this, so I called Nissan <laughs> to see what they would say. I was curious, I wanted to know if this would void the warranty, so I told Nissan that I have a 2017 Nissan Altima with 40,000 miles on it, which I don't have, I don't own a Nissan Altima, but I told them that just to see what they would say. So I asked them, if I install an aftermarket cooling system on my car, would that void my warranty? And they said yes and no. Yes, meaning that if the aftermarket cooling system has a problem, and it caused the CVT transmission to go bad, then that would void the warranty on the transmission. And no meaning that if the CVT transmission goes bad and the aftermarket cooling system didn't cause the, the CVT to go bad, then this wouldn't void the warranty on the transmission. But it can get tricky, according to Nissan. That's what they told me, it can get tricky. So what I got from that is that they could blame the aftermarket cooling system and say that it was the cause even though it wasn't or they could misdiagnose it and say that the aftermarket cooling system was the problem but it wasn't the problem. So I don't know what you get your conclusion from that. <laughs> So maybe install the aftermarket cooling system if that's what you want to do with your car after your warranty is over so that you don't risk voiding your warranty with the aftermarket cooling system. But that's your decision to make and do more research about that to, to make sure what's best for you. That's it in this video. I hope this video helps you and if it does, I would really appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel. Also, if you like this video, then hit the I like it button and if you don't like it, then hit the I don't like it button. This helps with the YouTube algorithm and I upload videos every week just like this one and for mobile mechanics like how to build a successful mobile mechanic business. Check out my business page on Facebook, there you can see rates and reviews and things about my work and what I do. Alright, alright, see you next week.